what is DeFi? How do I DeFi? And can I make any money on DeFi? If you're watching this video, you basically already know that you can't earn money with your money in a savings account. You're gonna lose about 3% a year in a bank. That's crazy. You can earn money in DeFi, in cryptocurrency by lending and borrowing and liquidity mining. Let's dive in. DeFi is short for decentralized finance. It's basically disintermediating finance. It's, it's getting the banks and the middlemen out of the way so that we can have this nice system of peer-to-peer -peer lending, borrowing, uh, insurance, trading, liquidity providing. And all of these are extremely important because in this system, this cryptocurrency and blockchain world that we're now living in, it's open. Anybody can get in, anybody can get out. You can do what you want with very limited permissions. It's pseudonymous. So my wallet has an address that may or may not be easily linked to myself. So if somebody is seeing my transaction on the blockchain, they don't know necessarily it's me unless they're one of those brokers at the on and off ramps like Coinbase, for instance. It is flexible. You can do a lot of things with this and some people call it like building blocks or Legos of finance where you can build certain things on top of each other. We haven't even really scratched the surface of the realm of possible yet. Uh, with these rudimentary DeFi applications. It is fast. It is, uh, if you're working on Ethereum, done in about 13 seconds. Each one of those transactions final, essentially, when it's written into those blocks every 13 seconds. And then uh, lastly, you can, you can earn some good interest very cheaply. So the normal transactions or things that you would have to buy and put up as collateral in the standard financial system are extremely onerous. If you're going to buy a house, you have to put about you know, 10, 20% down on that. If you're going to be taking out a large loan, you're gonna pay hundreds or thousands of dollars in fees. Interacting on Ethereum, you're probably gonna pay you know, 20 to $50 of fees depending on what you're trying to do with that. Easiest way to get into DeFi is to be on Ethereum and is to use MetaMask. MetaMask is an extension mainly with Chrome. So if you just download Chrome, if you probably already have it on your computer, it works on a couple others too, and then just go to metamask.io. And then MetaMask is going to be essentially uh, an extension in your browser. So you download and install. It's going to download. Let's get started. The seed phrase is the most important thing in this whole process and you best not lose this. I don't care if you write it down, take a picture, do whatever, do something that can safely secure this so that if you do need to recover your keys, you can do so, and that so that your keys don't also get compromised. If somebody finds these keys, they have literally found all of the funds in this wallet. Uh, I already have a seed phrase, or let's get started. So assuming that you guys are new here, let's get started and create a wallet. Help us improve MetaMask. No thanks. Password is... All right, so we're gonna secure our wallet. This is your key phrase. So write this down, take a picture, do whatever, save it and secure it. So here you're going to confirm that you basically did write it down or save it somehow because you have to regurgitate it. All right, let's confirm. Congratulations, you're all in. You're done. All right, so we've installed MetaMask. Now we're gonna go to our MetaMask wallet. Up in the top right, you'll see the little puzzle piece. Click on the puzzle piece and we're gonna pin MetaMask to our extensions up here. You could have several extensions, you could have none. Then we're going to click on the MetaMask and then we're gonna log in with our password. Okay, right now I don't have any Ethereum in my account. Balance is literally zero. So in order to show you guys how to use DeFi, I'm going to deposit some Ethereum in my account here. Here's my address right here, but you can also use your QR code if you want to send Ethereum to this address. Uh, that's an easy way of doing that from something like your phone, for instance. So I'll be right back. So I'll go to my app. I'll select one ETH and I'm going to send that to the QR code. 
So now I can see that I have one ETH in my account. That's easy. Uh, I have no activity as of yet other than receiving that ETH. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uniswap.info. Uniswap info is the uh, front end application showing you exactly what's going on on Uniswap. It's not the actual code itself, but it's a front page uh, graphical user interface for understanding what's going on. So right now I have Ethereum, uh, which, which is one of the many pairs of, of, of Uniswap. Let's go to version two. It's a little bit easier to understand uh, what exactly you're doing uh, in Uniswap. So right now I have uh, Ethereum, which is one of the many different tokens on here. So let's say I want to do some liquidity provision for HEX in this instance. What I'm going to have to do to do that is to deposit two different sets of tokens so that those can be in a liquidity pool that will enable other people to buy and sell out of that pool. And you will therefore get a reward in yield, an APY in this case of approximately 50 to 3% depending on which pair you're going to put your money into. So I want to do hex and ETH. So I need to trade to get that hex in my wallet before I start creating that liquidity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click trade. It's going to take me over to the Uniswap app, which is actually interacting with uh, the blockchain, uh, the Uniswap blockchain to actually buy and sell those ERC uh, 20 tokens in this instance. So I want my currency that I'm trading from on the top, ETH. I want the currency I'm trading to on the bottom. I have one ETH, so I'm going to do 0.4, let's say, ETH. It's going to say you are going to be trading approximately $1,200 of ETH for about $1,200 of HEX. It's going to charge you 0.3% for this trade. And then the last thing I recommend doing is always decreasing your price impact, uh, your slippage, uh, to something that's not really significant. In this case, it's automatically set at 0.5, which is more than the price impact that you can see here of 0 0.08, which is pretty low slippage. Uh, but I can get better uh, prices on V2, as it says here, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go over to uh, version two. This has a price slippage of 0 0.06. Uh, <laughs> somebody just traded, so it's better on V2. It doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to do this anyways. I'm going to connect my wallet that we just had. And then I'm going to click swap. It's telling me exactly what it's going to be doing. $1,200 for $1,200 of ETH to HEX. Uh, here's my price impact. Here's my minimum amount of HEX that I'm going to receive. And then I'm going to confirm the swap. And this is something that usually gets people uh, thrown for a whirl here is you don't need to mess around with the gas fees. You can just take what Uniswap suggests as the gas fees and confirm that. If you do want a little bit more control, you can go in and edit and select the priority for your transaction. Do you really want this transaction to go through or are you open to taking a little bit of chance and having it go through in 10 minutes rather than just the next 30 seconds? I'm gonna just, for the sake of this video, go with what the Uniswap gas fees recommend. I'm gonna click confirm. If you need to, you can add the hex to your MetaMask so that you can see your hex once you get it. So I just added it based on that add hex button there. And then uh, I will see this up, oh, see it just transacted. I now have $1,200 less uh, USD worth of ETH. And I now have approximately $1,200 worth of hex. And that number was more than the minimum amount of hex that it promised me that I would get. On the activity page, I can see that I just swapped ETH for HEX. So everything worked out great. Now I'm gonna go back to Uniswap and either V2 or V3. V2 is basically a simple pool. V3 gets pretty complicated. I'm gonna go to the pool tab. I'm gonna say I want to add a new position or what you could do on Uniswap info is just add liquidity. All right, so I'm gonna add the maximum amount of hex that I have and the maximum amount of corresponding ETH. So right now it's about a 50-50% split. I need to approve the use in MetaMask of my hex uh, before it can actually do this liquidity provision. It basically is saying, yes, it's mine, you can use it. 
All right, there we go. I just got my hex approved to supply the liquidity. The ETH is already good to go. So I'm gonna confirm this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this much uh, hex and this much ETH into the pool. And there we can see it just executed. So I can see that on the explorer that my one uh, hex here and my Ethereum, and this says wrapped ether, uh, in this case, ether, the currency, native currency of Ethereum, has been wrapped in an ERC20 standard, basically making it usable on Ethereum, which is kind of weird. Uh, and then it has given me a liquidity provision uh, token. So this token basically says that I have uh, this amount of liquidity uh, 0 0.00026 uh, of hex and ETH uh, in that pool. So if I go back, close, so my pool, it'll show me that I have this position of hex ETH. Uh, this is the amount of tokens that I have, and this is my amount of uh, percent in that pool. And if you are curious, then you can go to see exactly what the Yield is on your pool currently, and this is just basically a snapshot in time. So this is the hex ETH pool that we just put into. So I'm a little, little minnow in this $4 million pool that is currently experiencing $6.2 million of volume per day. Um, if you want a good wag here, always be interested in high volume and low liquidity. Uh, and obviously there's some outliers from this but if there's high volume and low liquidity then your your fees are going to be more substantial uh, for your percentage of ownership in that pool so based on that twelve hundred dollars and twelve hundred dollars twenty four hundred dollars worth of eth and hex that i have in this pool i'm going to be getting 170 percent apy or annual le uh, yield on that and that is a just basically instantaneous snapshot based on this current volume and this current liquidity getting about $18,000 in fees per day split among those people in my pool. Cool, hopefully that helps. Let's also do a version three of Uniswap transaction, just in case you're curious. With the caveat of with Uniswap V3, you can provide liquidity in certain narrow bands and maximize your yield on those. So for instance, if we were one to ether here and I went to add liquidity, and I want to add ETH and HEX like we just did. You could select exactly where in the price change uh, market making that you wanted to provide that liquidity. And with that, you could either be very concentrated in one area or you could be very broad. The more concentration you have, the more percent of those fees that you would get. However, when it approaches the low end or the high end of that trading um, pairing, you will either be 100% in ETH or 100% in HEX. That's uh, one of the benefits and the downsides with Uniswap V3 is because you're providing that liquidity in a narrow uh, passage, uh, it's going to be essentially a limit order on each side of that. You're gonna be 100% in the one token or 100% in the other. If you're dead in the middle of that, you're gonna be 50-50 split. So it's good to do. It's also has potential to be a significantly higher rate of return uh, for those tokens. It also has a significantly higher uh, likelihood that you'll be a deeper liquidity pool, obviously, in that narrow band. And then potentially even lower liquidity if you go onto some of these tail uh, fringe um, sides of that, that maybe before it could have been a little bit more averaged out. Hopefully that helps. DeFi is exciting. We covered the liquidity pool aspect of that. It's called yield farming. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer method of enabling the trading and transacting without those immediate, uh, intermediaries and CFI. We did not cover lending and borrowing today. That's a little bit more centralized. You have to give up your keys uh, for those and they basically just lend out your crypto. The returns are substantially lower than yield farming, generally speaking. Uh, but it may be a little bit less risk for some people. I would recommend not going to shady fringe sites that are promising thousands of dollars of liquidity rewards unless you know absolutely what you were doing. Hopefully this helps. This is Jerry. Like, subscribe. See you.